But I do want to talk about how to do a headlock mm -hmm. better. Better. Your okay. <laughs> face is super uncomfortable. And then <laughs> your ass is going to be sued. So you mentioned headlocks, right? Yeah, so it's one of those techniques that a lot of people know how to do it without knowing how to do it well. They think they know it, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will just try to naturally just grab the head and they'll try to punch. And it's not really a bad position even when they do it wrong, but there's a way to make it more efficient and okay. people really don't understand that one. But <laughs> it's good to know, right? So okay. even if you don't care to use it on people, even in the, the idea of self-defense, because we learn so many techniques for or a uh, headlock that mm -hmm. if you can learn how to do a headlock better and more efficient, then it makes the training of getting out of a headlock much yeah. more in depth and yeah. much more efficient Naturally, as yeah. well. So what a lot of people do for the headlock is they'll just try to come over the shoulder and get the arm kind of loose around the, the neck. It doesn't, it, they almost think of it as kind of a choke. But really what you want to think of here is obviously if we start moving in, one of the natural things that we always talk about in self-defense is tucking the chin, protecting mm -hmm. the throat and the windpipe, all of that. That's supposed to be like number one, right? People will naturally do that even if that uh, even if they don't try to if they're if they're not thinking about it sometimes people will naturally do that and just tuck down as this arm comes up over the head mm -hmm. so it's a good possibility that you can get in underneath and try to choke but it's a lot of extra work to get that and people can fight against it pulling the arm down tucking the chin mm -hmm. so what we're going to do is actually focus along the jawline itself on so, the next then Okay. Not on the neck, this okay. is up above. Okay. So if you feel like from the temple going down, or like along the beard, right? <laughs> <laughs> For those who have one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you open and close your mouth, you can kind of feel right in between where the teeth are in the top and the bottom. Where you can feel where the muscle is right here. Mm -hmm. And you can even push on that and it, it already feels a little bit uncomfortable, right? That's mm -hmm. a good spot. Yeah. We're gonna try to do that by, uh, we're gonna try to press on that with the forearm using the blade of the forearm right here. So when we come around the head, even if he tucks the chin, I have a good spot where I can just go from the ear towards the face. And then now I don't have to try to get underneath that chin. All I have to do is think of squeezing and pulling this arm as if it's a blade and I'm gonna just cut right through his head. <laughs> and I can have counter pressure. So I have my pressure from the arm. I have counter pressure from my body pushing into it. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay, just make sure. So when you feel this, it's really tight. It cinches in. And this is mm -hmm. gonna be a much more efficient way to control the head when, we do, when we're doing a headlock. So mm -hmm. if you have to use this on somebody or you're, you want to train more efficiently, when you grab the head and you pull them down, this is where you want to be. You want to have the control of the head right here, thinking of cinching through and really putting in some pain. When they're thinking about the pain right here, it's going to be at the back of their mind when they're trying to do something to get out of it. And it makes it that much more difficult to get out of the headlock that way. From there, it's also kind of based off of the same idea of how to get out of a headlock. A lot of techniques online how to get out of a rear neck choke, how to get off a headlock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, it's like, yeah, sometimes a little bit crazy. I yeah, oh yeah. So what would you do when you are in a headlock? So if I'm put in a headlock, again, the first thing I want to do is, you know, protect my throat. <laughs> and now in this case, you've got the, you know, you've got the forearm across the jaw, you're squeezing in, it's a lot of pressure here. Mm -hmm. What I want to make sure I do is dis uh, distribute my weight. I want to get a good stance and I want to make sure that I'm turning my head towards my opponent. Now from here, I'm going to bring my hand over, and this is kind of the universal thing. We have different ways that you can get into it. If it's really violent, I can start by just trying to punch or to strike at the groin and really try to take his mind off of squeezing my head apart. If it's not that bad of a situation, you can skip that step. But the next thing you want to do is bring your hand up and over the top. And there's a couple of things that we can do here. Mm -hmm. If they have hair, grab the hair, pull the hair. If you can, grab an ear, that's okay. You can grab at the eyes, grab further, grab at the nose, but the closer you get to the nose, the closer you get to the teeth. So you have to make a decision if you're gonna go over the top to get to there, or we go directly under the chin. And once we get under the chin here, you can start peeling up. Now my arm is not gonna have a lot of power this way, so I have to use my arm and my body together. So once I get this hand underneath, everything has to work to bring him up and over. And this kind of follows that same principle that again, when I was talking about when you control the head and you start moving, people follow their head. So even if somebody's really strong, when they're, when they're in with that headlock, 
even if I can get my hand underneath here and I start peeling back, if they're not used to it, if they're not used to having their head turned or manipulated, they will follow where their eyes go. We break their posture, right? You get the back like this, it's very easy to tip them back over or you can attack from there. Yeah, the body will follow then when the head is going first. Exactly, exactly. So you have your options. You can grab the hair, pull back, depending on the height, depending on if you can get your hand underneath. If you do want to try to go in and, and hook a thumb underneath the jaw, right. that's always uncomfortable as well. So you're kind of playing them at that game too, where you're adding a little bit of extra pain to get them to take their mind off of their, their technique. You're breaking their mind from that first, then you're breaking their posture, and then you can do whatever you want to to follow up. Because you have, um, you have a good, like you use this one as like a takedown, right? You have a yes. much similar setup. Yeah, pretty much it's a takedown. So when I'm here in the headlock, what I want to make sure is that I'm already behind his leg here. Then we have the same, we go here on top to make sure that we're on the face because the face is super uncomfortable. And then, fuck it. Yeah, so right over, yeah. tipping over the leg, yeah. the head follows, you're pulling the head back. It's a really good way of doing it. So yeah. you really, I mean, it's, it's yeah. I mean, even if you have like the situation, a small woman, a strong big guy, the face is always going to hurt. It's not like, you have not this difference in strength. Yeah, it's definitely a good way. The, it's a more sensitive area. And depending on that person's experience, it could actually be quite easy. Doesn't mean that it's going to be, you know, super easy, perfectly, you know, everything's gonna go the way it does, you know, the first time you do it in class. You have to train a little bit more intense each time. So, like right now when we're explaining, sometimes we'll all like, I'll we'll start off and I'll grab and I'm just, I'll, I'll have it kind of nice and relaxed here for a second because we're talking and also, <laughs> you know, we start moving, it's gonna start, uh, you know, jamming up at the microphone and everything. But in practice, it's not, when we go in there and we grab, we start applying that pressure. We make it a little bit harder to, for this person to work to get out of. But again, understanding once you can protect yourself, you can get a good stance and then you take their posture, you take their mind off of what they're doing. They follow the head you now have control and it, you can you can move in for another following technique if you want to to strike you can try to pull them off balance they may get thrown down to the ground they may just stumble back and not really fall down like a you know like a nice good throw would do but that still gives you enough space to make your next you know plan of action either get out of there or running in and continue striking if you need yeah, I think now when you're talking like about this self-defense scenario, so to speak, so self-defense is also a legal term. So when I am in the headlock, he is threatening me for my life. Now, when he puts too much pressure, I go unconscious. So I'm going out and now I have defended myself and the situation is now even. If I start to strike now, I am the aggressor. Yeah. <laughs> because he's now on the ground and like the victim. You should be pretty clear what you're going to do. We know adrenaline is going to spike cortisol, all the hormones are going to rise. Make sure that you think maybe one second about what you're gonna do because when you are now the aggressor, you are gonna have a problem. Nowadays, you're going to be sued. I guarantee yourself, <laughs> your ass is going to be sued. Yeah, and that's it. You know, you have to, uh, that's the really the hardest part about self-defense is you have so many different paths that it can take depending on the very first part of the situation. Only when they have that hand around the neck, this is really your your green light, you, you know, now you can go into that self-defense mode and have it legally as self-defense. Yeah. But the next turn that you take, whether or not you're gonna be aggressive and try to rip and pull at the hair or the eyes or whatever, or start striking and then grab and throw the person on the ground, that all changes the situation because it's considered reasonable force is the best term for it. And yeah. mm -hmm. you know, that's what they're looking for. Were you able to use the right amount of violence to stop your aggressor? Maybe a little example. When I worked in security, we had um, the sticks how do you call it? Like this? a baton. Yeah. yeah, like a baton with um, with an iron ball on top of it. So it would like tack and then you could hit somebody. But you're only allowed to use this when the other person threatens you with like a weapon that is at least on the same level or above. So 
bam, a bottle of beer cut open that he could like stab, then you are allowed to use something like this. And in self-defense, it's always, you can only use something that is on this level. If he threatens me with a fist, an elbow, whatever, with the limbs, then I can only defend with that. <laughs> if I take then the bottle, Okay, the, when you talk about self-defense, there are also other scenarios. So for example, if an attacker comes in ooh, like this, and if you want to see what you can do in this scenario, what the solution is to this scenario, then you should watch this video here. Let's see you there.